Hi, I'm Tim Crawford with FlexCut Tools, and I've been wood carving since 1995. And since starting, I've been using FlexCut Tools. FlexCut is the only carving tools entirely made in the United States. Today I'll be demonstrating the beginner craft carver set by FlexCut. The set includes the boot blank and all the tools necessary to complete this project. So let's get started. Hi, uh, today this is the blank that you have in your uh, craft kit and what I want to show is uh, how to lay it out and how to get started. Uh, one of the first things that uh, I suggest and I usually use a, a pencil to lay out is that you need to establish the center line around this boot. Uh, and so you establish a center line here uh, up and down across the boot and what I will do is I'm actually going to uh, use also a magic marker here uh, so it prints a little better and you can see then uh, the lines on the boot. This is going to help in rounding uh, the edges uh, of the boot. And one thing, no matter what size, when you reprint this or make a new copy of the boot, uh, whether it's a thicker stock or uh, even a thinner stock, uh, be sure and drill the hole first. Uh, this, hole, this boot has come pre-drilled, uh, ready for toothpicks. And after you have laid this out, and here's the dimensions, uh, you know that this is how wide this is. Uh, you're going to simply come around and also mark the edges here. This edge is going to be give you then, uh, and you can do that with this with just a pencil because it's much easier with a, a pencil uh, and that. And this is going to give you the the layout and the circumference that is going to be needed up here uh, to round the, the back side of the boot and also then the front uh, side of the boot. Here, One of the things that I do, uh, and depending upon the size, I keep coins laying on my workbench and you can see that that uh, provides then a nice circumference. In this case, uh, we'd be using a quarter uh, as uh, the guide and all you do is have to hold that on there and simply take a pencil and run it around and that gives you a good a nice circle uh, to be carving to. One way also to carve then the bottom is using the same coin to make the toe You'd simply go use hold the coin down there and take your pencil, make a curve on the toe, and to round the heel, you do the exact same thing. Hold the coin on and make a nice circle. So then you have the bottom laid out and you have the sides. And this dimension here is the same as this dimension here. Makes it rounding it much, much easier. Today what I want to point out also is on the grain. The grain of this boot and that we'll be carving, the grain is running uh, up and down on the boot so it's going up and down along uh, the boot here. And you can see uh, on the grain here, there again is running straight up and down. And one thing that you want to be careful of is that the front part of the boot actually curves in. So you have grain coming down here, and you also have grain that comes up here. And you'll want to be carving down this way and also up. So you just simply take the skew and hold it uh, in your palm. Uh, the wooden handles come with it where all you have to do is interchange them and in mounting these uh, you always want to keep your hand off to the side uh, simply slide it in and it slides back out uh, quite easy. So when you start we're simply going to start and cut and start to round uh, this project
This SKU is uh, the SK308 uh, and the handle is the 100. And you can see here, just remove that and you're coming clear back to your pencil line. In this case, uh, I have a much darker line and I'll, we'll be taking that off. When you round the top, you want to be very careful on chipping that off, bringing it back to your uh, line that you made, uh, rounding it with the coin there, and slicing that off. But you want to bring that in to the line, and just take the line off. That gets you down to where you're rounding. You don't want to take too much off. And there again, you notice that I'm turning the boot to get down and into this take off those chips you need to come from the from the bottom up because of the grain. The back's a little easier to round off uh, because the grain is pretty straight. Uh, you see these little western boots they come in many different styles and shapes and you get to where you can put a few different accents on them. And some people like to leave their line on for a little bit and then go back and take it off. Uh, I leave the center line on, which is this rear center line, uh, only as a guide. It's just rounding it off. You just have to keep taking uh, nice, easy strokes. Use the keep the skew going right up through it. <coughs> and I just point out that uh, I use my left thumb to sort of guide that skew. Uh, that way, it's a uh, better control when you have both both hands guiding that skew up through. There again when you're going to do the other part of the heel you have to turn the turn it around. And I always take a half inch or so and just get that down rounded around to that heel and then move up as I continue to round up. And here you have uh, some saw marks on the uh, uh, boot that you'll want to be taking off also in the rounding uh, process. And you can see here that I have it just about rounded right down to the line that we drew for a round. Okay, we've rounded this uh, heel and now we're going to move to the toe and round the toe. One thing you have to remember is that the grain here is running up and down and so in rounding the toe uh, you want to make sure that the toe is down to the uh, circle uh, line here but then also start cutting from the tip of the, the sole part of the tip of the toe uh, up and round, round this off uh, in here. So we'll get started with the skew and I will uh, get this down to where it is a little bit uh, down to our coin mark here. Simply 
actually start to round this off. And in rounding the toe, you also sort of want to remember that uh, on boots and shoes, when you are rounding it, uh, you're going to narrow one side. And we have this center line that is also in here. It's good to pencil that in. Um, gives you an idea of where you're coming into. Uh, with this sort of being a, a boot, I want to narrow down the one side so I have this center line. And you just come off the center line and uh, bring this down. And this will give the sensation of that this is a, a left-handed boot coming in. And I will be taking off then all of this area here. And if you keep your skew nice and sharp, you can just pull that off real easy. Also, like to demonstrate uh, here taking out the tool, still rounding the tool, rounding the toe, uh, and taking the using the gouge also. So you simply slide that in, and then using it, and you're simply using your wrist to come up and take off that that wood area. And you see that using this number 11 quarter inch gouge, you can take off quite a bit of wood and round that up, stepping up just each time as you go back across there. And you would do the same on the other side. Notice also uh, on this cut, I have it where appears that I'm actually cutting right back uh, to myself. Using the gouge this way and just keeping it uh, very close, small cuts, you can see that it's very controlled uh, in the cut. You can only take smaller, smaller cuts that way, but it certainly does provide an avenue to take off uh, wood coming up through there. And you can also then get uh, the bends of the boot uh, started. You know, the blades are real and quick to change and you simply then smooth up that area a little bit. And since the gouge has left just a, a little rounding cuts in there, you want to be sure and just sort of smooth them off. And do the same on the other side.
And there you go, you're starting to at least get the shape of the boot uh, uh, in on that uh, with the toe rounded. And you can take off. These are simply green marks. Next we'll be rounding the uh, ankle area here and getting the ankle in a little bit. Well, we've uh, rounded the uh, toe and the heel. One of the things on uh, the boot, uh, if you want, look at a worn boot, uh, you have a section that usually uh, dips in just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually dip this in and, uh, and carve this uh, out to give it a, a worn look. Uh, you also down here have a double, usually a double layer uh, where the heel comes around uh, and you have this uh, double layer and just above there it dips in. Now you can do this uh, with uh, either one of the, uh, the tool or the gouge, the skew or the gouge. Uh, in this case I'm just going to do it with the skew. Uh, it's very simple. You simply go put a few cuts down and turn the boot around and bring a few cuts up and you've got a little bit of a dip in there. I'm going to take off this rear center line because I don't really need it uh, anymore so I'm going to carve those lines actually off that I put on just for visual sight purposes. So sort of taking the, uh, the saw marks off the boot. There you can see that this boot then has a little bit of a dip here uh, to look worn and when we put the accent marks on it, why it will accent it even a little more. You want to remove the saw cuts from the, uh, the sole. You can see that we have some saw cuts here. Uh, also uh, down in the uh, where the heel meets the, uh, the sole, you'll want to uh, clean that up just a little bit uh, simply by taking the skew and making stock cuts uh, down along that edge. Uh, you can also, uh, if you're so inclined, uh, you can put a pencil mark in there and uh, then remove that pencil mark or cut down to it. In removing the saw cuts you're actually going across the grain so you need to make sure that the skew is nice and sharp or your knife is nice and sharp and simply by going across them on a very thin uh, basis you're going to be able to remove the lines and you're also then going to uh, make that smoother. Uh, I always put my uh, name on the bottom uh, and that way uh, when I give them to people why they uh, at least know who, who did carve them. Uh, and when you're cutting then the toe of this boot is actually up. Uh, you can sand this if you're so inclined uh, to get uh, these marks off and as you can see here I still have a, a little bit of where I had narrowed uh, this boot so I need to come back over 
and bring that in and to take that line off and take the front off. Now in, in this you have to remember the grain is running up and down here so you'll actually want to cut this uh, back up rather than trying coming down on the grain. You'll want to cut this up and simply by taking the skew and running it down across there. You'll want to keep this as flat as possible. Uh, you don't want to round the bottom uh, in any way. Uh, this is a, a small project and you need a, as a nice a flat area as you can uh, by putting some toothpicks in it or uh, small flowers or whatever you put in it. Uh, you'll want to make sure that it's as flat uh, on this bottom edge as you can. And of course, they uh, being sawed, uh, they're nice and flat, and so you want to continue with that being uh, nice and flat. So it'll stay, still stay nice and flat, and you can see I've removed uh, most of the saw marks. Uh, on this uh, area and also uh, have been able to take off uh, all the black lines uh, which I had put on. You'd normally I would use a pencil to draw in the lines, the accent lines on uh, the boot. What uh, I'm going to use today though is a black magic marker so they stand out and it's uh, very simple. You have to put in the uh, sole uh, where the, the upper leather is separated from the bottom sole here and in curving putting that line on and then we're going to be taking that line off so uh, you bring that line right around and just think of a sole of a cowboy boot or a work boot where they come in here. And on the heel, uh, you naturally want the heel a little thicker, so you bring that around and bring it around here. And you can see putting these in, I just try to darken it up for the demonstration purposes. Also, put a toe on and you can bring the line down here so the two pieces of upper leather on most boots they have. It's always good to make sure too that the top is done even on both sides and simply bring that down and into this area. Now to take those off, uh, here's another boot which I've put uh, two, two designs on, basically the same uh, as you can see and I've cut this one. But I want to demonstrate here. Uh, there again, take the skew out and this is the first time we're going to be using the V-tool. Uh, and the uh, V-tool here in this case is the SK307, it's a 70 degree uh, that you're going to receive, uh, that you receive in your pack. And to simply do that, you have to remember still you're cutting with the grain. And in this case, I'm going to go up and cut right along this boot area and basically take the line, line off and do the same on the other side. Come right from the where the heel meets the sole, and bring it right up. One thing with a V tool, you want to make sure that your the wings or the tops of the V never go really below the wood. Now it's a little harder going across and separating this because you're there again. You're going across uh, the grain. 
The nice thing about flex cut is that I previously mentioned they come razor sharp and they will cut right across the grain and not leave any marks. And you're going to come up here and you're going to come up to the actual toe part and stop and then you come back to this side and start again and come up along the other side of the boot taking out your line and coming up to the front of the toe. And sometimes you have to go back over it. You don't try to take too much off at once. Uh, sometimes you have to make two or even three passes uh, to get uh, all of them cut off. To do the toe, the same thing. You're coming up from the bottom and you come up across and basically stop right at the top. And you come to the other side and come up and stop at the top. in the toe. Then to do the heel you're doing the same thing. You're starting at the side, coming around the heel, up over, and stop at the, uh, the midpoint on the back, turn the boot around, and come over, and come up, and stop at the midpoint on the back. And you're going to do the same thing by with this arch or the where the double leather is on the heel. Come up, come around, stop at the center line, come back over here, come up, and come around. And right in. And you can go back through and make sure that you have all your your lines off. One thing here is if you have also a smaller V-tool, uh, you can actually make these a little deeper uh, and they will then stand out a little bit more. Uh, or in finishing sometimes, if you use a stain, they have a tendency to uh, come out uh, and the lines will come out a little better. The uh, that's basically using the V-tool uh, to make uh, the separation between the sole and the upper leather and the heel uh, in the upper leather. Now we have the boot pretty well finished with all the uh, lines in separating the soles and uh, the toe and what we're going to do is put in some accent marks. Uh, with the accent marks uh, you want to put in and sort of really bring the boot to life uh, with uh, some of the bends, uh, also where we have narrowed it back here, uh, that will have some bends in. You can either use uh, the uh, V-tool uh, if you want those lines sharper, or uh, I prefer to use the gouge uh, in this situation uh, <clears throat> and put them in a little more rounding. You can also use the number 11 uh, one eighth a gouge versus the quarter inch if you are uh, have one of the bigger sets uh, or something. But to put in some accent marks, uh, you simply need to, you can actually pencil them in if you want to. Uh, and I just prefer to sort of uh, uh, go along, and look at where they're bending, and bring, bring those in. And I'll put uh, three or four, and you can also see where uh, some of the knife marks are and remove those a little bit with these uh, uh, accent gouges. Uh, if you have uh, uh, blemishes in the wood, uh, it's a good place to do that. Uh, also on the front, because the boots have a tendency to bend forward, you want to bring this uh, in and bring the, 
line clear across. In your kit you only get uh, one handle uh, if you're so inclined you don't like to change the handles. Uh, FlexCut does sell other handles. Uh, they're three for thirty dollars uh, and can be uh, ordered so you don't have to change handles back and forth. But you can see here I've put in just a few little grooves to sort of bring that boot uh, to life here and you might bring it this one back just a little further and you just uh, to your liking on what you like to uh, how wrinkly you want to see this uh, uh, see this boot and with a few touch-ups uh, when I finish the top here uh, We'll do some finishing and uh, have the boot ready to, uh, to go. Today we're going to finish the boot. I finished uh, all of the boots in many different uh, uh, ways. Uh, my probably the preferred is boiled linseed oil and uh, wax, uh, wax mixture. I've also used the Minwax uh, stain uh, to make them a little bit darker or the uh, poly uh, wipe. But with the linseed oil, you can do a couple different uh, methods. You can actually just uh, put boil, the boiled linseed oil into a container and dip the boot. Or today I'm going to just use and brush a little linseed oil on. And you brush on very liberally uh, because you're going to let it sit and then wipe it off. Uh, naturally the bottom will take a little little more. It doesn't really take too much. Uh, a couple tablespoons uh, actually does a very good job on the uh, on the boot. And just make sure you get it down into the grooves. Uh, this will help preserve it and also gives it a little uh, good color. and make sure you get it into the accent marks. Sometimes staining those accent marks or even if you uh, take the uh, stain, the stain will have a tendency to uh, darken the, the grooves. Uh, this will leave the, uh, the boiled linseed oil and make sure you use boiled uh, linseed oil, not regular linseed oil. It'll just take a little longer. But you can see just by putting that there and then leaving it sit, uh, you're in a, a good situation that it'll have a tendency to uh, mark and come out, uh, bring out the color uh, in the different uh, accent uh, areas. Another way to finish them is with strictly uh, a wax. In this particular case, this is a, a golden oak. Uh, gives a nice finish. Uh, I keep two brushes. I keep a brush that uh, I have labeled as on and one that's labeled as off. Just uh, for the wax, all you have to do is uh, have an on brush and I just brush it on. And brush it in. Make sure the biggest thing is to brush it into the grooves and you can Again, this wax has a little bit of an oak stain. It's a light oak stain, so it. And you don't need much. You just need enough to get down and into those uh, groove areas. And I use more of the tip of the, the brush to get down into the grooves. Be sure and get the accent marks that you put in to make that boot look more worn. Some of the and when you get to the bottom line, you just make sure you get down and in the Mm 
very, uh, I hope that you enjoy the carving, uh, carving, you can let that dry just a few minutes, even like with the linseed oil, and I wipe that off, the excess linseed oil, and let it dry overnight. And you have a have a nice booth. And linseed oil has it as a lighter color. Uh, some people like to put a stain under it. <clears throat> With the uh, wax, you can then take, uh, after it dries, uh, take a, another brush. Uh, I know people that use shoe, shoe polish, uh, but you want to have a brush that uh, you take off and sort of just brush off that uh, excess. Uh, I always let it dry even a little bit more, and then wipe it with a paper towel. Uh, and you come out with a nice looking, and you can see how the uh, accent marks in the wood uh, grain is going to then stand out even a little more. Nice thing about a brush is you can get it down through the grooves. Then you can take uh, the boot and whether it's finished with linse, this is finished with linseed oil, uh, or you can uh, then just put a few uh, toothpicks in and you have a nice finished boot uh, here. These are all out of basswood, uh, and even though they're out of uh, basswood, you can see that it has, shows the green and some other color. You can also, uh, if you feel that they're going to be handled a lot, um, you can uh, take the boot and finish it with a, a polyurethane spray. That will give it a little bit of a gloss uh, in that. But they make excellent gifts. Hope that you enjoy your uh, carving uh, if you're so inclined. Uh, there are other products with uh, uh, FlexCut that you can uh, get through their catalog or their website. One of the ones that I recommend is the, uh, if you're so inclined, on one of the first purchases should be your KN300. Uh, it provides not only the detail knife, but it also provides the small detail knife. And it also gives you uh, some compound. Uh, the Whittler's Kit, uh, with those two knives, you can do just about any product, uh, project that uh, comes along. So I hope that you enjoy, and from uh, FlexCut, uh, it's staff, uh, Steve Bain, the owner. Uh, we wish you happy carving.